Okay. The next section is called Transforming Equations Between Polar and Rectangular Coordinates. And one direction is at least semi straightforward. So we're no longer looking at points. We're looking at equations. And the direction I said is at least semi straightforward. is going from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. Um, you are unlikely to get a very nice looking polar equation, but we can plug and play with the following two statements. X equals R times the cosine of theta, Y equals R times the sine of theta. So if we have, you know, Y equals X squared plus X minus one, and we really want to write this, in polar coordinates. Well, we can say that R times the sine of theta equals R times the cosine of theta squared plus R times the cosine of theta minus one. And probably the take home message from this example is that it's often a bad idea to convert from rectangular to polar coordinates. Um, this first equation is much nicer than this second equation. But at least theoretically, it was not hard to do we just plugged in our cosine of theta whenever x showed up, and we plugged in our sine of theta whenever y showed up. Let me look, let us look, I should say, at an example of this where we get something nice. I mean, if this was the only example we showed you, then you'd probably leave this class thinking this is just a bad idea and we should never do it. Let's take a look at x squared plus y squared equals nine. You, uh, you may recognize this as the equation of a circle. And you may remember me telling you that polar coordinates work well when you have circles. So trying to convert this into polar coordinates isn't a crazy thought. And if we do, again, it's plug and play with these two equations. X is this. Y is this, nine remains nine. And it, um, it probably seems like I've taken this and made it worse. 
but there's some simp simplification that you can do here. So notice that we have a cosine squared and a sine squared. And maybe your instincts are screaming at you. This looks like something we might be able to simplify using the Pythagorean identity. And if your instincts are screaming that to you, your instincts are to be congratulated because they are entirely correct. The cosine squared plus the sine squared is one. We get that r squared equals Nine. And we actually end up with two solutions. R equals three is a solution. R equals negative three is a solution. These all give you the same thing. These being this and this and this. All three of these equations generate the same circle. Let's end this video with just one more example. I, um, I know I said this section was called Transforming Equations Between Polar and Rectangular Forms, and the title made me think we were going to go both ways. But now that I'm actually looking at the textbook, I see they only want to go one way, from Cartesian to polar. This last example is pretty tricky, truth be told. I mean, truth be told, and I never know if I should say things like this, but I find this material in general to be pretty tricky sometimes. Um, that is to say, the, uh, the plugging and saying part is easy. But the part where you try to do simplification, like happened here, isn't necessarily going to be obvious. So here, the left-hand side of this equation, I mean, it's the same x squared plus y squared, we had in this example, and it's going to end up being r squared. So since we just did that like a few minutes ago, let's not repeat the details. And now let's see what we can do. And what we can do is plug and say, y is r times the sine of theta. So r squared equals six times r times the sine of theta. So far, so good. Um, but we can simplify this further. 
And here's where I think things get kind of tricky. But we do see that we have R's on the left and R's on the right. So maybe we could try to combine those R's together. Well, if combination is our goal, we need our R's to be on the same side of the equality. And then we can, well, we can factor out N R. But what happens now is probably not obvious. Um, what happens now is that we can apply the so-called zero product property um, for a product to equal zero. One of the things we are multiplying has to be zero. And really, only one of these equalities is worth anything. Um, take a moment. I'm going to go to Desmos. But while I do, take a moment to try to think. What would R equals zero look like? What equation do we get from R equals zero? I mean, what graph do we get from that? Okay, check. Um, our answer, remember that R is the distance from the origin. So R equals zero. Um, gives us a single point, which I guess going to Desmos was kind of because Desmos isn't even showing this. Um, but the point R equals zero gives you the origin and only the origin. And if we compare that to x squared plus y squared equals six y, Well, this should not be the origin and only the origin. We're looking for something whose equation is a circle. And oops, I uh, kind of scribbled it out a little. But this equation, r equals 6 times the sine of theta, is exactly what we are looking for. As we see, here's our original equation written in rectangular coordinates. Here's r equals six times the sine of theta. 
And with this third example, we'll bring this video and this section to a close.